Lucky number week 13 is in the books. We started off our first the, the first of our December games, and I saw divisional matchups that were crucial. I saw some bad matchups that sucked. I saw some people stepping up when they needed to, and all in all, we got NFL football. Let's enjoy every second of it because the season's almost over, and things are about to get a lot of fun to talk about. Today, it's just me and Bars the God. You over there. What's up, Bars? Yo, what's going on? What's going on? All right. A lot of good stuff. Glad to see you. Bars has a new haircut. Looking fresh as always. And um, let's get into it. No hated tonight. He is uh, too sad about the Jet game, and uh, he can't make it. So we'll make fun of the Jets without him. But first, I want to talk about Monday Night Football. The Cincinnati Bengals took on the Jacksonville Jaguars and won by a score of 34-31. A lot of things that stick out in this game. First, Trevor Lawrence goes down. Looks like he sprained his ankle <clears throat> in the in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that was big. An- another franchise quarterback going down, Bars. That's like about 10, 11. Sad stuff there. But we had Jake Browning step up, getting a few touchdowns, getting solid yardage. Yeah, good for and, that, man. Good um, for that man. We had quite a matchup. They were able to go down the field in overtime and get the victory. So I have two questions for you, Bars. First things first. Can Jake Browning lead the Jet lead the Bengals to the playoffs after a game like that? They're six and six in the hunt. He's shown he can be competent as long as the other players stay healthy. Jamar Chase um, having a big game like he did. Do you see the Cincinnati Bengals making a run for it? The better question is: Is Jake Browning the best Browns quarterback we've seen all year? That's a better question. Um, but at the same time. I can't. I could possibly see the the Browns going for it, but uh, they it's a lot like we've said it a lot of times on the show. It's a lot of teams that could possibly be calling for it in the end. So we'll have to see how it is. But Jake Browning, like you know, he had a great game. Um, Jamar Chase was looking phenomenal. Joe Mixon had two touchdowns. Uh, it was more so like it was just a good game, like a really good game. This is what the Brown. This is what the the Bengals were doing right before Joe Burrow got hurt, you know, they, they was on a roll. And now, like, you know what I'm saying? It is what it mm-hmm. is. It sucks that that Trevor Lawrence had to go down in this game. It's another franchise quarterback, like you said, but it was a good game nonetheless. Really, really. You know, that's a good question. I do th- would go with the sure thing, the MVP caliber Joe Burrow, as long as he's healthy and he seems to not have been healthy throughout, came in the season shaken up. We have this wrist injury that just escalated into the worst case scenario. But said, regardless, Brown. though, I said Browns. I'm sorry. We're talking about the Bengals. It's all good. It's all good. But with the Bengals, though, I do think Jake Browning can at least show some confidence. The one thing for all the quarterbacks that have gone down this season and for all the teams that have not been able to make up for it, some teams have gone backwards and some have gone forward. <clears throat> like the Jets, for instance, going backwards after an injury. The Vikings at first looked okay, but Josh Dobbs looks a little iffy, even though they're on a bye. But as long as Jake Browning can stay consistent, I think you'd be very satisfied if you're a Cincinnati Bengals fan. Which transfers to the other team, Trevor Lawrence. We're still figuring out um, the consensus of how long he's he's going to be out, but say it's a few weeks and he doesn't get back to the playoffs until January. Do you think the Jaguars have a chance to uh, at least get to the uh, get get to the playoffs? Possibly win their division with a very good Texans team behind them. Um, now with Trevor Lawrence going down, I don't know. That's a very that's a very that's a very questionable move. Their defense is good, but Trevor Lawrence kind of facilitates that offense in a certain type of way. And when they're down, he'll score them that point. He'll get them those points. You know what I'm saying? Um. I don't know. At the, I, I was really big on the Jaguars but at first, but now, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> Only a matter Texans, of time. I think the Texans, we'll talk about the Texans. You got it. You got it. Now, let's just quickly look at the AFC <laughs> South at the moment. You good there, Matt? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Now, don't forget, you have a Colts team behind them that won four in a row. They're seven and five. Huge win over the Titans. Huge division win as well. 
I think if you're the Jaguars, you're panicking with both the Texans and Colts at seven and five right behind them. Obviously, would rather have that division matchup. Um, we'll probably refer to this a lot. So let me pull up the um NFL playoffs standings at the moment. It's because again, we're probably going to refer to them a lot during this next hour. But if we're looking at the playoff picture. <laughs> I'm sick with this bullshit, but um, I'm about to say, get this man some water. <laughs> okay, let's see. This is just pulling up right now. Okay, so if we're going through at this moment, the Colts are the sixth seed, with the Jaguars are the fourth seed, winning the division. The Texas right under them, and um, at, right under them in the eighth spot. Remember, seven teams get in now. Um. Yeah, with the Jaguars falling down, it's a uh, pretty crucial, and you know, it's looking at the Jaguars' remaining schedule. Where do you, where you, where are you viewing? Uh, where are you viewing the the, the playoff picture? At? Is uh, just Google search with the standings, okay. and so the Jaguars go play a Browns team that just lost last week. I don't know about. The, I'll talk more on the Browns, but. I don't think the Browns with their quarterback situation is going to improve, though Joe Flacco played very impressive. So now they don't have another they don't have another division game except the Titans, who are clearly out of it. So they're just going to have to watch what um, the Texans and Colts do. But um, regardless, clearly without Trevor Lawrence, that team is in a huge hole, despite a very good coaching uh, besides being very well coached by Doug Peterson. And yeah, I guess they're just. They're just going to hope it's not as bad as it's projected to be. And how long is it projected? Is he projected to be out? So we have a high, it is a high ankle. It is a high ankle sprain. And. They think if all goes well, he could make it back by the end of the season. But, you know, nothing's not guaranteed. And um, the other thing, also remember, they lost Christian Kirk. And they mm. he had a groin injury. And they actually think he's out for the rest of the season. He needs surgery there. So, um, Yikes. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, man, he might be. If there's any hope, they're going to try to get him out there. But huge blow to the Jaguars. And if you're the Colts and Texans, you'll unfortunately, you know, I mean, unfortunately for the Jaguars, but for them, it's an opportunity to uh, make a push and maybe get those last two spots. If they could get two spots and three teams in that division to, for the playoffs, but we'll ultimately see where it goes, but tough break for Jacksonville. So now let's talk about up, who's, I mean, it all depends on who's stepping up as their quarterback, man. Like well, we have, um, so they're going to start um, Broussard, who played fine, but, you know, he's just no Trevor Lawrence. Um, they're not going to go get another quarterback, but um, they'll see what they do with C.J. Bethard. I mean, it, it's it's manageable. It's manageable. Uh, they play the Browns next. That might be a shaky game for them. Uh, the Ravens definitely might be a shaky game. The Bucks, Panthers, and Titans, I believe, are all winnable. So if – they can at least win those three games. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, we'll see where it goes. But, you know, the journeyman quarterback, Bethard, he's been fine. He's been around for about 10 years as a solid backup. Um, This will be his first start next year. I mean, sorry, next week. And, yeah, we'll, we'll ultimately see what happens with him. First start um, ever? His first start as a Jacksonville Jaguar, yeah. Oh, um, It will. Had me shooky. Mm-hmm. I didn't see that game going good. I don't see this game going good at all, to be honest. Yeah, well, we'll we'll refer to that a little later. But tough break for Jacksonville. Now let's get into the New York Jets and the Atlanta Falcons that played an excruciating game on Sunday afternoon at MetLife Stadium, where the Falcons won by a score of thirteen to eight horrendous football throughout so i don't know my setup um i all i i'm lucky enough to have three tvs i have 
Uh, I got two in the background, and then I have my iPad for the local games, and then I have Red Zone in one. And you know, a game's bad when the Jets aren't really sh- when uh, that game wasn't really shown on Red Zone that much. There was just nothing to watch. It was brutal throughout. But somebody had to win, and it was the Atlanta Falcons. And here's this: we we don't have to talk about another shit Jet game. And we know how it goes. The Falcons are leading their division at the moment, so good win for them. And somebody has to win that horrendous division. But, you know, big win for the Bucks to at least make some sort of a push. But here's the big news we have to talk about the Jets this time, Bars. I don't know if you're aware of this, but there is a report out there, you know, as the Jets are trying to figure out how to go about the rest of their season. The season is completely shot. There's no way they're making the playoffs. If they do, I will retire from this podcast. But they're not. They You will not see the New York Jets in the playoffs this year. Probably you won't see Aaron Rodgers return to the roster. No point to put him out there. So they'll see there how whispers, they can sell. whispers about it, but that's that's foolish at this point. I don't think it's going to be the case now, especially after um what's going on here. Don't want to risk the injury. And I think he's smart enough to notice that there's no point to to play. But um if they want to play spoiler and if they want to, you know, have their held head up high as the season ends. The Jets try to figure out their quarterback situation. Now they actually cut Tim Boyle today. Trevor yeah. Simeon's on the roster, and they brought in Brett Rippon from the Seahawks, as if that matters. But regardless, there was a report that Zach Wilson was approached about being the starting quarterback again, and allegedly at the time of this recording, he's actually reluctant to play. Apparently, he doesn't want to play anymore for the Jets, whether that's if he wants to avoid an injury before he goes into free agency this year, because there's no way he's going back to the Jets or whether he just feels like, man, this franchise has screwed me over. I'm the most hated quarterback. Maybe I'm the most hated athlete in all sports right now. Nobody respects me. Why should I go on the field for a team that doesn't respect me and a fan base that doesn't respect me? Now, I would love to hear thoughts bars, but I just want to say here, listen, I've never been a professional football player, only gone as high as high school. And, but the fact that he has some kind of balls to say, yeah, nah, I don't want to play. You have the opportunity to start an NFL game that people kill for, that people dedicate their whole lives just to start for an NFL franchise, regardless of whoever it is. And the fact that this guy has the wherewithal to say, nah, that's a, that's pretty insulting for all those who have gone out there and played for all those who have gone out there and have had catastrophic injuries. And from all the reactions that I've seen from both NFL alumni and coaches and current players, it's uh, they're like, you know, F this guy, who cares? He might as well get cut. And um, that's for this guy, Zach Wilson. And unfortunately there is no hate in here, but I talked to him and he said, yeah, maybe it was, he doesn't, he doesn't want to go out there with the line like BS man. This is an opportunity to play the beautiful sport of football, and this guy just doesn't feel like doing it. Bars, what are your thoughts on this? To be honest, man, I'm gonna take the opposite side of the, uh, of this argument. I'm actually I'm actually side with Zach Wilson on not playing because let's look at this let's look what this franchise has done for me. They drafted mm-hmm. me high and then haven't even put the time and effort in for me, right? To like to to sh- like prove like let me prove that I'm the guy even though I suck. You know what I'm saying? Like, everyone else gets to suck it up for a while, but you guys went out and drafted, or drafted, sorry, went up and and picked a quarterback who's got, like, I don't know, three good years left in him, brought an entire team with him, right? And then basically predicated the whole team around him the entire offseason. And then when this bastard goes down in the first game, on the first snap, y'all have the audacity to not even have the full faith in me. Yo, if I'm Zach Wilson, I'm sitting my ass down too. I'm not getting back up and playing for them. How many like, but then again, if I'm the Jets franchise, like Zach Wilson sucks. And I said that at the beginning of the season. But what I will say is, as a player, like, yeah, you know, you're right, Matt. You should be grateful for every time you touch. For every time you touch uh every time you touch the field as a starter. 
a lot of people play this game and don't even get a chance to be a starter. Don't even get a chance to get off the bench. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they don't even get off the practice squad. So you should have that, you know? But at the same time, like, he he he's choosing him. Like, he pulling an Andrew Luck. He's choosing him. Like, I'm not going to play for y'all right now because at the end of the day, like, y'all ain't got no faith in me. Y'all suck, but at least have some faith in me. Help me develop. Develop me. Like, coach me better. Anything. But you can have your old man. I'm going to go on another team who's going to take the time for me. Man, yeah, I disagree with that take because think about the teammates you're letting down by doing that. True. And that think true. about also the this guy, if you want, for somebody who's embarrassed himself for three years, the man's had 32 starts in the NFL. And if he wants any hope to get actually put on an NFL roster, to be put on that roster and be respected, you make the most of these last four games. But if he if he truly doesn't care, I think he's made like $30 million. He can make that last a long time. Go back to Utah and, you know, do whatever. Fine. You do you because it will clearly show you don't care what people think because I think he's well aware that he's not liked. But, I mean, yeah, I just feel like for those things, it, uh, you, 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 you instead of saying why me, you say try me. And you'd make the most of it. And if he's as good as he's supposed to be, you know, you make the most of these last four games. But if he just isn't feeling it, then uh, we'll see you later. And you lose some respect along the way while you leave the door. So I let's mean, get... All right. Yes. Just real, I mean, you are, you were correct about, like, screwing over your teammates. I, I, I do feel that. But if I'm Zach Wilson, I feel like my teammates screwed me over. I get that, fight. but unfortunately, it's a team sport. It's not boxing. It's all, it's all you. And at least if you wanted to end with some class and some grace, you make the most of these four games. But we'll ultimately see what happens. I'm excited to talk about next week what exactly happens in the Jet game and if he's the one taking the snaps. Facts. All right, let's continue, Bars, with what was supposed to be the game of the week, and it wound up being a blowout. One that I was certainly fond of. But this is what happened. The San Francisco 49ers played the Philadelphia Eagles a rematch of last year's NFC Championship. The 49ers went to Philadelphia, and they did not leave anything to grasp because they went into Lincoln Financial Field and stuck their foot up their ass and kicked it and pushed it to the ground and kicked it again and again and again. Huge statement game for the 49ers. Brock Purdy throws four touchdowns. The 49ers defense holds the Eagles to just 19 points, and they do this all on their home turf. The 49ers make a big statement. The 49ers at the moment are your number two seed, but damn well they play like the number one in the entire NFC and maybe in this entire league. So first things first, what does this game say about the 49ers? And then you follow it up with what this game says about the Eagles bars. I mean, literally, this game literally says the 49ers are better than the Eagles. Like, Thank literally. You. That's what it literally says. That's what on I'm paper, saying. On paper and on, and on the field. Blah, blah, blah. But in literal fact, I still believe that the Eagles are a better team, in my opinion. But I guess that's just off of, like, personal opinion. I will say this. When the playmakers on the 49ers get that ball, look out. Debo is Debo. Uh, Ayuk, George Kittle, uh, Christian McCaffrey. You know, they can – and it's like I was talking to Junk about Kittle not having no no play a couple of games they lost. When he gets play, they probably win in the game. Like, and 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 it's pretty scary. Um, the Eagles just seem lethargic in a way, almost scared to tackle. Like, there was a point where, like, easy tackle could have been made on Purdy. Probably could have tackled, stripped him. Stripped him. It was, like, the most tired-ass tackle i ever seen. If I was if I was the coach, not only am I benching that kid for the next three games, but he probably on the, he, he probably on the practice squad starting next season. So, like, I don't know. That was pretty pathetic, like, outing, uh, like, I don't know, man. It was just a quiet game from the Eagles, and I was kind of disappointed, to be honest. 
really disappointing. So what do you think they could do differently? Say that these two actually meet up in the playoffs. What would the Eagles have to do to break this 49ers team who was healthy the whole way? You talked about the three-game losing streak. That was without Debo and Trent Williams. That's to quite a tall test. What could they? What do you think they would be able to do to actually knock them off? Rush Trent Williams better. Um, try. Uh play better. I don't, yo, honestly, the 49ers came to play. They made it, they had a statement. They made that statement. They've been waiting for this game. They really marked it on their calendars. They literally marked it on their calendars. They said that if they quarterback weren't hurt, they would have exposed them. And it's looking like it's an actual fact at this point. Like, so I'm not saying I'm on the 49ers bandwagon, but I will say I put some respect on their name. What the Eagles got to do is respect that team now and get into the film room and really see it. Put some actual pressure. Like, they was pr- pressuring Purdy, but, like, Purdy seemed comfortable. Like, you know, and then, I don't know, like, they kind of had those rushers. It was it was, a, it was, a decent – it was a decent – nah, I can't even say it was decent. They had those rushers on lock. Like, Trent Williams and them boys on the O-line was doing a thing that day, like, Ain't nothing ain't no you can really do for the Like, you just got to play harder. You just got to play harder. I don't know. Hmm, I get it. Man, Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy, it, he might not exactly be a Tom Brady out there. He might not exactly make humongous plays with just solely him. He's not Patrick Mahomes. But this guy is getting the right people, the right, the right, the ball at the right time. And it just shows, again, the competence of an uh, he, the confidence of a good quarterback. He's he's like he's like better than a Nick Foles, but like worse than a Tom Brady. Like I'm trying to think of a quarterback that won this era that was like that could, that you could compare Brock Purdy to. Hey, time will tell. It's all about just the receivers and his weapons. Maybe he's like True. a younger Joe Flacco in his day, and then and, um. It's it just works sometimes, and as long as he stays healthy, they're in a good spot. And the one difference, for some reason, he does get hurt. And the big fatal mistake that the 49ers had last year was though Brock Purdy was on their was their third string quarterback at the time. Um, Trey Lance goes down, Jimmy G. Then you have Brock Purdy. Then you had Jake Johnson as the emergency quarterback. Um, this time they have a legitimate number two in Sam Darnold who got some snaps and. Um, the 49ers, I think, are bound for the Super Bowl at this point. And as long as nobody gets hurt, they're gonna win. Hold on. Where the where where is Trey Lance? He's at the Cowboys. They traded him. Ah, that's exactly where he's at. I forgot about him. Exactly. So for a franchise that knows if something doesn't work, fix it. Clearly, that's what happened with the 49ers, Trey Lance. They got rid of him when they knew it wasn't going to work. And we've definitely pointed out, pointed out to some other franchises who held on a little too long. So why don't we talk about the Eagles' other rival, which sets up a big game the Sunday night, where the Dallas Cowboys play the Seattle Seahawks on Thursday night. They win the game 41-35, to and at one point, Dallas was trailing 35-27. to and Dak Prescott willed the Cowboys to a major victory and having them win their fifth game, their fifth straight game at home. Seahawks were banged up, but do they have any life? Um, I think it's going to be hard with, again, your 49ers. And um, Seahawks right now are ninth, and you have the Rams in front of them. But um, the Cowboys, man. Actually, beat the, again. They did beat another team under five hundred. Uh, team that sorry, they were able to beat a team over five hundred, which is big. But you think Dak Prescott should be a serious MVP candidate? No, I will say this though. In this penalty credit. ridden you got, game, you got exactly. You got to put credit on that defense, man. Got to put credit on that defense. Without that defense making some of those plays, like that game could have won another way. Like DK Metcalf had like two, three touchdowns. Like, but CeeDee Lamb was also going too. 
I honestly, and honestly, which is which is actually really funny because both of them are like two of my like I would say my top five favorite right or white on White House right now. C D K and um C D. Uh, I say C D is like my favorite and like the way his route running is, but like D K, he's the physical type. That that game was really good. That game was really good in my opinion. And like I said, it could have gone either way. I still don't want to put Dak in that in that category. He got a good defense behind him. Let me see him win against the 49ers. Let me see him like beat the Packers now that the Packers are on the roll. Let me see him handle the Lions and the Eagles. And then we could talk about it. Fair enough. That is one thing I will say with the similar to the Miami Dolphins, they had a hard time beating teams over 500. Now, they did beat the Seahawks team over 500. Now, they went from but 6 and 5 to 6 This is a safety Seahawks team over 500. Exactly. And that's the big test. Five games to go, Bars. They play the Eagles on Sunday night. We can preview that in the picks. But that essentially decides your division. Both these teams will definitely make the playoffs, but that definitely decide can decide the home field advantage over those two if or the 49ers don't um, win out and – the Cowboys, if they knock off the Eagles, huge win there. The In your Cowboys opinion. play the Bills, Dolphins, Lions, as you mentioned, big line game on December 30th, then in the season with the Commanders. Your question? In my opinion, in your opinion, what's the second hardest game on their schedule left? Out left of this schedule. one? Yeah, the, left on their schedule. The second hardest after the Eagles, obviously. Yeah. That's a good question. To- if I if I had to pick. It's it's probably the Dolphins, which will be a great test. This stellar defense versus this offense that seems to not be stopped when they are on a roll. That's and, going to be a huge game. Christmas Eve, four twenty-five. Um, so much on the line. Well, who knows? That is a Super Bowl rematch. Who knows if it's a Super Bowl preview? Um, two classic NFL franchises there, and for both teams that have been criticized for not defeating more prominent teams over 500. It's only fitting that they are going to go against each other to, um, they're going to go up against each other to finish out um, their year, uh, finish out towards the year. So I think you give the dolphins there and I'm excited to see how that matchup unfolds. And hopefully everybody's healthy for that. I am as well. And like you said it yourself, they also got a Lions matchup, right? Yes. The week That's- after. That's three games for Dak to prove himself. If Dak even wins two of those games, I'll 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 start knocking that door for him. Excellent point there. I and you know I do respect. I don't like the Cowboys, but I respect Dak and says plenty to prove. So let's hope that. Uh, well, hopefully they lose, but we'll see if Dak is worthwhile. And it could be the secret on this Cowboys team. Maybe they could finally, you know make some sort of a push or have you at least feel confident because if they're able to somehow be the number one seed, even with San Francisco in the mix, that would be pretty impressive there. But yeah, I will give them a little see, credit. Their ceiling is um to get to the NFC championship, which they haven't since 1995. And the only thing with the, I think you definitely have to get this Lions team, which we are going to talk about right now. The Lions won over the New Orleans Saints by a score of 33 to 28. Now, here's the thing, Bars. The Lions were up 24-7 to going into the first half. They win 33-28, but it wasn't easy, and they almost caused a literal franchise worth choke job. That would have been the worst loss um, given up in their franchise history. But regardless, a win is a win, and they're 93 for the first time since the 1960s. I'm worried about this Lions team, though, Bars. They, despite them having an impressive nine and three record, they have blown they they you know bad loss to Green Bay on Thanksgiving. They almost blew this game. They were destroyed by the Ravens. Those are some pretty heavy hitting teams, and a lot of people feel that this Lions team they can they're very they're no doubt good enough to make it to the playoffs. And kudos to them. But um, they might be one and done. Now we'll see how the rest of the season goes for Detroit. But um, I'm worried that these games are too common. The Lions, these uh, close games after starting off so hot. 
So when you look at the score breakdown, right, you see 21 to zero in the first quarter. Then you see three, three to seven in the second. You see three to 14 in the third. And you see six to seven in the fourth. What do you see here? The Lions not playing defense, not capitalizing on offense. So there's still a piece or two away from my original prediction of them being that dark horse in the NFC. I feel like even if they do make it to the playoffs at this point, they're almost a glass cannon. Like they're going to put the points up or, but they're, but they're not going to be able to sustain and they're going to get broken down probably first or second round. So it is what it is. Um, but the, in my opinion, they should have handled this, this like half ass Saints team, like very easily. Um, like Chris Olave had the damn there come like running back to catch a ball. Like Derek Carr is not it. I've said this like a thousand times. Um, I feel bad for Jameis Winston. He's just stuck in sweatshops and just like not being able to do anything for the teams that he joins. But it's like this Lions team, I don't know, man. Like Jared Goff, this like even though he has been to a Super Bowl, even though he was you know, he had those prolific numbers in the beginning of his career. Something is, like, screaming, not that guy. Like, the rest of the team is there. They need a little bit more pieces on defense. But they need a better leader at the helm. They need someone who doesn't seem like a dare in headlights. Like, you know, and I don't know. Jared Goff is not it. You don't, you don't think Jared Goff... You don't think Jared Goff can will them to a deeper run? Nah. They to a Super Bowl. They nah. 213, two 213 two ain't going to do it for you. Well, I think Jared Goff can uh, make the plays as long as you have Amon, Amon Ross St. Brown to help the cause, too. And I Sam Laporta is turning into one of the best tight ends of the league, even as a rookie. So, if I mean, if I gave Amon... Ross St. Brown to Justin Fields, I think the Bears would be doing better too, but still be looking like weird. I think, no, Jared Goff is so much better than Justin Fields throwing Definitely. the ball. But, but, but it's a testimony to Amon Ross St. Brown and how good he is. Like, I got him on fantasy and he's doing me numbers. And also, the Lions have one of the best lines in the league too. So they're protecting him and they clearly can run up the score, but. I agree with you, and that was a major problem last year that is slightly improved, but something to really target in the offseason is a better defense because they are clearly giving up too much points throughout. Um, Ada Hutchinson can only do so much, as is one of the best exactly. pass rushers in the league. But um, we'll see where it goes. I'm just worried about this Lions team being substantial. Yeah, get a couple more cornerbacks, man. Show up your safety room. Like, I don't know, man. You get... Get some better uh, linebackers. But whatever you do, I don't know. Look into a Matthew Judon. This ain't it. All right, let's move on. We have the Houston Texans play the Denver Broncos. A stellar game against two very good teams in this league. And despite the Houston Texans losing Tank Dell in a pileup, um, which is a major loss to them, Houston was able to defeat the Denver Broncos at home, stopping their five-game winning streak. I do think both these AFC teams can make a push for the playoffs despite just being under the hunt. They're both actually right next to each other. But as long as they can win three of their next five games and, you know, with some health losses, I think um it'll be a good – it'll there's a good chance that they can sneak themselves in, especially if the Texans can win their division. But, I mean, these days, Stroud does it again. I don't know if you saw their linebacker go in their face. He just doesn't care. C.J. Stroud, even though I, I wish he didn't make as many turnovers as he did in the first half, which was none, but the man plays hard. The man with this receiver, with all these young receivers, is making plays with the veteran tight end. And the Broncos are no easy chicken. Now, of course, their horrendous start – Um. Their horrendous start didn't help, but at least they're able to make up for lost time with a resurging Russell Wilson. I think Sean Payton has proved he can be a good coach because, you know, one and five to six to six at the moment is pretty good. 
But that was a really good game against two really good teams that anything could have happened regarding with both with this game could have gone either way, but it was the Texans who ended up on top. What do you think about this game bars? I love this game. I, I like, I'm just enjoying the rise of CJ Stroud. Um, as he goes and he takes these guys on epic, epic battle against, uh, Trevor Lawrence, epic battle against Baker Mayfield, epic battle against, um, uh, Russell Wilson. Now, like I know I didn't say that in order. doesn't matter. I'm just highlighting the fact that CJ Stroud is out here playing like, yo, I am him. And, and I would like to give, uh, the play to get the play of the week to Jimmy Ward for picking off Russell Wilson in the end zone to seal that game off and helping his quarterback to, yo, possibly make a playoff run as a rookie. And if he make that run, I don't know. Like I said, earlier in the, earlier I said in the season, CJ for MVP. I, I jumped on that bandwagon. I'm there. You're going to stick with it? Sticking with it. He's playing. He's throwing. He's running. You can't do this. Tank Tank Dell is. A, you, you know what? Uh, condolences to that man. Losing him is big. He was having a great season as a rookie, but like you got to give it to the team for still coming through, getting that win. Uh, was it Nico Collins? Collins had like almost two hundred yards off nine receptions. Like, it was ridiculous. And he had a touchdown. So, I still have faith in his team, but losing Dell is going to be big. Okay, okay. Um, and regarding the Broncos, though, how do you feel about them snapping their five-game losing streak? Everybody comes back down to earth. Everybody comes back down to earth. It happens. I, I think, um, like, the loss – Helps them realize where what they um what they need to work on because they had a good game. I wouldn't say that it was a bad beat. I say it was a good game. It was a good game for it was a good game for um Texans. Good game for the Broncos. The Texans just won. You know what I'm saying? Like uh they they bet they put a big bet play up and you saw what happened. Russell Wilson had three interceptions. They gotta fix that. They gotta fix that. Like. That's 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 like that's the biggest thing that contributed to their loss, I would say. But at the same time, I would say that, you know, he was playing he was playing almost lights out five game win streak. You gotta give him that, you know? Mm-hmm. So they just came back down to earth real quick. I I doubt that this deters them from the rise that they're they're that they're trending on right now. All right, let's move forward. The Packers played the Chiefs. The Packers won by a score of 27 and 19 in this very first Super Bowl rematch and Patrick Mahomes first ever game starting at Lambeau Field. He had more receiver problems. He was getting rung up by the Packers defense and it showed Jordan Love was not intimidated with the big show with the big matchup. Played one hell of a game throwing three touchdowns, getting solid yardage and um the Packers if they can make the playoffs without Aaron Rodgers at the moment, they're the seventh seed. <laughs> what a way to show that uh, things are going to be okay in Green Bay. And then for the Chiefs, man, well, first, let's talk about the Packers first, and then we'll go with the Chiefs. The Packers, though, Jordan loves win. They are in the playoffs at this moment. What do we thought? What did we think? Uh, Jordan loves poised. Uh, every week, he's just getting, um, I wouldn't say better. He's just getting more solidified as that Packers starting quarterback. He is doing his thing. He is game managing. Uh, that run, that run, that run game is looking really good. Uh, AJ Dillon is not uh, shying away. Quadzilla is running through these guys. Uh, Watson, uh, Watson went down. Right. I I don't know what what the injury is looking like on him, but hopefully he comes back. Hopefully it's nothing that serious, but but that's big if they lose him. But this was a good game for 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 the Packers. I called this as an upset of the week. I literally did. I knew it was gonna go down like this. Uh because of those those you know, we'll get to the Chiefs, but I knew it was gonna go down like this. 
that Packers defense is solid. That front line is moving heavy and it's just getting, you know, you can't sleep on their secondary. But not even Patrick Mahomes with these terrible receivers. And this is my next point, dude. It's only a matter of time when we are going to have a very crucial game, probably um, in the playoffs. I do think the uh, Chiefs, though they, I, there's, I really don't think that they're right now. They're in the third seed. I think Miami and the Ravens are going to go over them, and I think Miami. Could be the Miami or the Ravens get the one seed and they have to play and they get the bye. So there's a good chance you might see the Chiefs on Wild Card Weekend. And I just see on Wild Card Weekend, whether it's Valdez Scantling or it's Rashid Rice, even though I do like him, um, whether it's Sky Moore, they're gonna keep dropping crucial they're gonna keep dropping um crucial game. They're gonna keep dropping the ball at crucial moments of the game. And um there'll be a complete disaster because clearly the lack of receivers are holding the chiefs back and not even Patrick Mahomes can save it. What do we think about the chiefs at this point? Very bad loss for them. Not even Taylor Swift could save them. Nah, it was, it was just a bad beat, especially with uh, Pacheco running so good. It was a great game for him. Yeah. Um, Like dude was running strong. Dude was running strong. Um, It was a great game for him. Like you said, like Patrick Mahomes getting a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure, um, and just bad drops and just like the receivers are just bad. And Travis Kelsey can't do everything. And it's just what it is. What it is. I I don't know. They got to fix something before that shit. They're a ticking down. time bomb, and they're gonna have a horrendous loss. And. Imagine if they lost in the wild card weekend, which I don't think has ever happened in the Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes era. And yeah, so if at the three seed, it looks like they would actually play the Colts if it's the season ended today. Um, yeah. But regardless, that's still five weeks away, so too early to project there. But the Chiefs, they are in some major trouble. And um I don't know. There's nothing they could do. As an old coach once said, can't catch the ball, can't play wide receiver. And uh, it seems like that is the problem in Kansas City. (laughs) The Indianapolis Colts defeated the Texan. No, I didn't. The Indianapolis Colts defeated the Tennessee Titans by a score of 31 to 28. It was a slow start for the Colts, but Gardner Minshew steps up and gets Indy the victory and inching closer in the playoffs. As I mentioned, they are in the playoff picture at this moment. But what about the Colts, bro? Not much to say on the Titans. Um, they played a good game. I do think Will Levis is getting better week after week. But um, no defense, an aging Derrick Henry, and a new regime probably taking over in Tennessee. But for the Colts, how we feel about them and Gardner Minshew? I mean, even I with their injury woes as well, there's no, they were, there's no um, Jonathan Taylor. Zach Moss is a solid backup, but um, the Colts, very good victory for them, I would say. Without Jonathan Taylor, I do see the team going down a bit more. It was the Titans. It was the Titans. I'm not going to say here and give it a glorified win. But, like, uh, depending on who the Colts see next is all how it goes. They see the Bengals next. They're Joe Burrowless. But um, Browning is looking all right. Uh, they see the Steelers. I honestly don't see us winning any games with Trubisky at the helm. So they might got that. The Falcons, I think they could, they, they could easily win that. The Raiders, that's going to be a little fight maybe. But they could win that, and then they got the Texans again. So to be honest, like they can, they can easily make the playoffs. To be honest, but in my opinion, without Jonathan Taylor and Gardner Minshew's like wishy washiness, it's a questionable on their main stability. I hear that. Respect to that. I don't even think there's more, more to add on to it. But I think they could be a sneaky team and watch out for the Colts. Yo, to be honest, I got this up to a deal. This is real quick, real, 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 like, real sugar, honey, iced tea. Like, can we skip the Patriots Chargers game? Like, what is that? We'll talk about that a little later. But, um, 
the Rams and the Browns played each other, though. Why don't we get into that? Where the Los Angeles Rams won by a score of 36 to 19. Stafford throws three touchdowns. Um Rams scored 36 points against the best defense in the league. And the Browns with Joe Flacco, though he played an impressive game, they fell very they fell short regardless. So my two questions here. Can the Rams sneak in the playoffs? They have the eighth seed right at the moment. And can the Browns go anywhere with Joe Flacco? Hell no, the Browns can't go nowhere with Joe Flacco. And yes, the Rams can definitely sneak into the playoffs. Ooh, tell me why. It's Joe Flacco. Like, and I think he threw two picks. I I, I don't don't quote me on that. But I think he threw like two picks. And at some point I'm like, yep, that's what Flacco. He's doing being Flacco with Flacco. Like it, it's like it, it is what it is, but this Rams team is actually really sneaky. Um, Puka Nakua, like he's still doing his thing. Cooper Cup still over there, like he had a touchdown. Like this team is still in the hunt, in my opinion. Matt Stafford is hungry, so like he heard all the he's not a he's not a Hall of Famer. He heard all those talks, so he's still gonna try to get some in. In my but in my opinion. Um, I agree with you. Put some respect on Stafford's name this year. I know he's had some injury woes, but the games he's played, he got that Rams team into it. You and me? as you mentioned, with the solid re- weapons he has, a returning Cooper Cup, who's played pretty well, Puka Nakura, um, a top rookie receiver, Tyler Higby, a very good tight end. Um, he is protected. Um, Kieran Williams is turning into a stubborn back this year. After coming back from injury himself, he might be the secret, the cherry on top to get this Rams team in the playoffs. Yeah, like you got to kind of look at it. They got playmakers. They make moves when it's when it's time to make moves. They're pretty dynamic. It is what it is with this team. Oh, uh, Flock only had one interception. He had two touchdowns. He was all right, but Matt Stafford is playing with no interceptions right now. Three touchdowns. Like he he he's he's spreading that ball around. He's doing. He's got to do like. I don't know. I think yeah. this. I think this Rams team actually has a big, like, a good chance of be getting into the playoffs and then being sneaky. Aaron so, Donald's still on the team. The thing with Cleveland, though, um, the thing with Cleveland, I do think Joe Flacco. I think listen, that defense is going to be fine. I reckon they did have a bad game against the Rams. As long as we have players like, you know, as long as Miles Garrett's there, they're going to be good. The Browns just need to stay competent again, as mentioned before, even with a lack of receivers. But I think if anything, even with the Sean Watson not coming back, uh, Dorian Thompson's hurt, P.J. Walker, if he, I think Joe Flacco at least gives them a chance. And he's obviously better. And we've clearly seen an example when you're not prepared with a quarterback that doesn't give you a chance, it might as well um, fold. But um, I do think the Rams have a better chance than the than the Ra- the Rams have a better chance than the Browns, despite the Browns being in the seventh seed right now. But um, we'll see where they go next week. Okay, okay, okay. We have the Dolphins at Commanders, where the Commanders had a bad Sunday afternoon. The Dolphins, the Dolphins scored forty five on them. Um, they just. Offense, they just have another offensive route against another bad team. But um, regardless, they're fun to watch. I hope the Dolphins make a deep run in the playoffs. It's fresh. It's new. There's some good stuff there. You know, we have a few more weeks to talk about where they're going. But I think the big question here, and he particularly had one hell of a game this past, this past week. But with five weeks to go, Tyreek Hill has a chance to be the first receiver to ever have 2,000 yard, 2,000 passing yards. Sorry. Receiving. Tyreek Hill has the opportunity to have the most receiving yards in a single season and pass the 2,000 mark. All right. Let me restart that again. Tyreek Hill, with five games to go, has the chance to pass, to surpass. 2,000 receiving yards. At this moment, he's at 1,481. Bars, do you think Tyreek Hill is going to beat that record? And is he going to have 2,000 receiving yards this year? Five games to go. 
he needs a little under 600 yards. So, a, little, a little, yeah, a little over 500 yards. But I mean, 600 would will, will, will destroy it. But, um, yeah, he needs like about like five, what, 519? Like 519 yards? Yes, exactly. The record is 1964, which is Calvin Johnson in 2012. And, um, that would be interesting if he could pass that, but he would be the first. Well, he would be the very first to do it. Is Tyreek Hill going to get that? So he'll need a, a, to average at least a hundred yards a game. <laughs> I, I I would love to see him do it. To be honest, I like five games, five games left. All he needs to do is literally get a hundred and about. A hundred and what two yards? No, no, a hundred and like a hundred and five yards each one of those games, and he's got it. He's got it. He, if if he even if if he even goes like uh, for like a hundred for four games, and then hits like a hundred and twenty, a hundred and fifty one games, he hits the record, blows it out the water. No one's gonna beat it for like twenty years. L- listen. I think he could do it, point blank, period. And if he does it, hear me now, NFL Top 100, make Tyreek Hill the number one player like he predicted all those years ago. Do it. Tyreek Hill going to be an MVP if he crosses that? I know you're very high in C.J. Stroud, but, you know, 2,000 yards is something no receiver has ever done before. No, Not Jerry Rice, not Calvin Johnson, not Larry Fitzgerald. could be Tyreek Hill. If they, if he gets it and they win every single one of those games, give it to him. Why not? Why not? Because, because at that point, if they win all those games and he's got all those, he's got those numbers, you can literally say he willed the team to victory. All right. Put the team on his back. Do it, Tyreek. Tyreek, hit 2K for me. Do 2K for me. If Tyreek Hill hits 2K, doesn't hit 2K, I'll be shaving my beard. If <laughs> You want to put that there? If Tyreek Hill has less than 2,000 receiving yards in 2023, you will I'm shave your beard. I'm shaving my beard. <laughs> All right. Let me, put, let me put that down. All right. We're going to see. Can't take it back, Bar. So this is you. I'm not, it's out there. What's up? I like it, Bars. I like it. Mad respect to it. Okay. Look at it now. Enjoy it. And it's a pretty solid beard. And you know, it's a hard time. It's hard for people to grow that. Yeah, I hear that all the time. Not me, of course, but <laughs> great, beard brothers. great minds think of Beard brothers, indeed. All right. Three more games, Bars. We have the Buccaneers defeating the Panthers. Evans gets. Another 1,000 yard season, his 10th in a row. And um, though the Panthers played a little tougher uh, post Frank Reich era, they fall short again. Um, good one for the Bucks. Do we see the Bucks making any sort of a push or are they going to uh, fall short at five and seven? The IR is technically in the hunt at this moment in the, in the, uh, in the uh, division that nobody wants to win with the Falcons and the Bucks and the Saints and then the Panthers, obviously. But um, what about the Bucks here? Because we know the, the Panthers are just absolute trash. You're right. It is a division that nobody wants. Nobody literally wants it. Like one day the, the Bucks are losing, the next day they're winning. The one day the, the, the Carolina Panthers – Somehow sneak a victory and every other game they're freaking losing. The <laughs> Saints don't know what they want to do like with themselves as a team. That division is a dumpster fire, literal dumpster fire. So if when we sit back here and we look at the game as a whole, what can we get out of this? Not a damn thing. Not a damn thing. We can get Michael, we can get Mike Mike or Mike um Evans getting his 1000 yard season, 10th in a row. That's great. Guarantee he's going to be in the Hall of Fame for that one. And he got a Super Bowl ring, so you know he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. That's all I got out of it. That's all I got out of it. 
that's all I got about it. Frank Reich got fired and nothing changed. Like, we appreciate greatness while it's here. All right, bars, you have the floor here. We just have two more games to go. We have to talk about the Arizona Cardinals going to land to. We have to talk about the Arizona Cardinals going to Pittsburgh and scoring 24 points off the Steelers in a rainy, messy, weather-delayed-filled game. <laughs> Pickett uh, was out with an ankle injury. And then Kyler and the Cards made the Steelers their son. They were their daddy. And a very, very bad loss for the Steelers, my guy. Let it all out. How do you feel about the Steelers losing to one of the worst teams in football? I, yo, I got no words, man. Like, to be honest, like, I'm kind of disappointed in, in several different ways. Like, I don't know what I watched. And then it was like the delayed game, all of this and that. It was I don't I'm baffled. To be honest. Damn, bro, are you sad? <sighs> Mortified. How I, could you lose to this trash team that's trying to try to tank? I get any team that lost to this trash team lose and like feel good about themselves. Like this is madness. I just gotta know. Like, right? If I'm Mike Tomlin and I'm sitting there looking at this, I'm sitting here wondering to myself. Why am I coaching at this point? Like, yo, literally, I've I've been to really? I've been to three Super Bowls. I've I've, I've hey, they I've are in the fifth. Two. They're in the fifth. They are in the fifth spot. They do have a playoff spot at the moment. They fifth, didn't change yeah. this week. Yeah, they did not move, which is good. Can Mitch Trubisky turn it around? Who the hell knows at this point? But the the, the fact of the matter is, Kenny's missing open plays. Like, uh... and do the receivers even like each other? With this, um, I know the the all these rumblings with Pickens not being happy and stuff. And um, what was that play? Can you just remind Deontay me which receiver? Yeah, Deontay not even making an attempt during one of the fumbles. I what's going on? I'm that. very surprised for like Tomlin, who's we, a no nonsense guy. Like, what's up get, with that? We getting blown out. You celebrating, bro? What are, what are you doing? Like we're we getting beat right now. You celebrating? They come to our stadium and kill us out, and and you celebrating because you got a touchdown, bro. That's your second touchdown, and I don't know how many games. Get your shit together, bro. I don't know. At this point, I just kind of don't want to watch the season or really care for the season. But really, like, with five weeks to go, still in the playoff spot, you you want to end it already with Mitchell Trubisky. As a starting quarterback, he, he just hey, got to see somebody to make passes and not throw, and, and not turn over the Mitch ball. Can't make a pass. Then if not, then at least don't turn over the ball. You you do you you feel a bit nervous Put with Mason. that? Put Mason in. Put Mason Rudolph in. Pay you feel more confident, Mason Rudolph. All right, I'm not confident in anything. Well, bars. I hope. Um, We'll see where this goes ultimately. Now, the final game, we do have to fulfill our obligation, but feel free to take this time to just crap all over it where the Chargers defeated the Patriots by a score of six to nothing. Just an ugly game throughout. And, um, you know, the Chargers won, but I don't th see them making a push as long as Brandon Staley there. Um, at this moment, they are 12th. They're not, they're not going to get in there. But uh, for two teams that are making the playoffs, a Chargers team that just needs a new coach to give them life again, and the Patriots who are probably on their way to drafting a top quarterback. Just tell me what do you have to say about this game or these two franchises, or if you want to just roast them and such. Oh, my God, man. Justin Herbert needs to sit down. I'm off the bandwagon completely. I'm tired of it. Like, like the Patriots, what? Uh... I've never been a Patriots fan. So watching their organization crumble and burn is just great to me. Like, I don't know. I, I don't have anything to say about this game. 
This was uh, as bad as a beat that we took. This was just a horrible game to watch. I felt like I took a loss watching that game. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's all it, it all comes down to sometimes, my friend. But it was an ugly game. And you know what's going to be funny? I get, despite the Patriots dominating for two decades, despite having one of the most annoying fan bases of all time and a fan base with major bandwagoners, the fact that they only have to suffer for essentially two years. They were in the playoffs two years ago with Mac Jones. And then they're going to have the promise of a great franchise quarterback that's likely going to be there. Your Bo Nix, your Caleb Williams, your Michael Penix Jr., your Jade, your Jaden Daniels. The list goes on and on. Drake May. It just shows, damn. Sometimes you have to suck at the right time, too. And... The difference between these good franchises and bad ones, my dude. And then when you are that bad, you are not going to stay there. <laughs> Patriots are going to get a top five pick for the first time in God knows how long. Jesus. Oh, well. Now let's go to our picks, bars. That'll complete all the games. Now remember, the way we do it, we pick three games here. I want you to first tell me uh, we're going to go with order. We're going to go with wait, the game of the wait week, a minute. the lock, upset, and the lock. I- I don't I don't want to I don't I don't think we did but did we miss a game? No, there weren't a lot of games this week so pretty easy stuff. Okay, you're right, you're right, you're right. My fault, my fault. My fault. I All right, but... I don't know why. No worries, dude. So, why don't we get into our picks of the week? The way we break this down, we're first going to pick a game of the week. Then we're going to pick a lock and then we're going to pick an upset. So let's do it, Bars. You tell me what you think will be the game of the week this week and All why. Right. All right. Game of the week this week. Cowboys Eagles. I'm going to call that the game of the week. Dallas is opening at minus three and a half. So why is this the game of the week, Bars? Because this is a chance for Dallas to beat a team that's well above 500. This is the chance for the Eagles to show that they're not just made out of the hot air, like and actually get like a good win. It's it's gonna be a battle between. I I want I want to see if J, if if J if if ha. Ah. Let me take let me take that one back real quick. If Jalen Hurts comes to play, then Dak has to come to play. It's not just on the defense. This is gonna be a grindy, a gritty game. I don't even think it's going to be high. Like, I I think it's going to be a low-scoring game predicated straight on defense. But, like, this is is a game for Dak to show, okay, I'm him. I'm the quarterback. I'm MVP. All right, respect to that. And I think I'm going to go with the game of the week being the Eagles and the Cowboys as well. I mean, can't get any better. Late Sunday night, high risk. High stakes, division on the line, home field advantage on the line. I'm going, for, with the, I'm going with the Eagles. So you're going with the Eagles on this one. So for one side with the Eagles, despite being um, ranked first in the division, but people say, you know, with a close poise differential, with keeping games too close, with some games barely get, with some wins barely happening without some luck, the Eagles want to show their dominant force with the Cowboys as well for a franchise that has had their ups and downs, only dominating bad teams, but they themselves have a chance to overthrow the defending NFC champions. It's pretty good stuff right there. Um, and pretty interesting, but I would like to see, like to think that this is going to be the game of the week with the Cowboys getting the upset victory over the Philadelphia Eagles Cowboys are great at home they've been great all season at home they've won five in a row I think Dak Prescott with a little more protection and the Eagles having um a last few games where they've come up short despite some wins and um also being banged up DeAndre Swift is questionable coming into this game Dallas Carter's still questionable I think um the Cowboys who are completely healthy we'll be able to get the upset victory on Sunday night. So now you tell, we went through the game of the week. You tell me your lock. What's definitely going to happen? Um, 
Yo, I'm not even gonna lie. So we're on the lock right now, you said? Yes. My lock for this week. Probably gonna be damn. My lock for this week's probably gonna be Giants, uh, Packers Giants. Just because you could you could count on the Giants to lose that game and count on the Packers to win this one, honestly. Or I could I could easily go with the Dolphins or the Titans, like, but I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm gonna be a little risky with this one. All right, respect to there. Take the Packers my lock on. of this my lock of this week is your Detroit Lions going up against the Chicago Bears, where Detroit is opening as a minus three favorite after getting embarrassed by the Bears earlier this season on their own home turf. And for a Detroit team, um, and for a Detroit team that has plenty to prove and to show them their legitimacy in this game, I think Detroit can get this victory on the road and uh, take care of the Bears pretty easily. So, last but not least, what is going to be your upset of the week? My upset of the week. A little risky on this one. Definitely a little risky on this one. But I'm going to say my upset of the week is going to be Seahawks 49ers. And I'm going to say the Seahawks win that one. You think the Seahawks are going to upset the San Francisco 49ers? Bold take. Why is that? With San Francisco opening at minus 10 and a half points at home. Because they just had a cra- San Francisco had a crazy win. Let's see if they can sustain. But the Seahawks just came back from the loss. And the, and Pete Carroll's gonna have that defense playing on fire, and Geno came off a good game where I feel like he could have won that. So yeah, I feel like they're about to play hard. I feel like they're they got something to prove, a little chip on the shoulder. Like I think they're gonna, they're I, I still think they're fighting for a playoff spot. So I, I feel like they the the forty nine uh, the 49ers underestimate them a bit, and they get caught with their pants down. All right, my upset is Thursday night where the New England Patriots are going to upset the Pittsburgh Steelers, where the Pittsburgh's opening at minus six, at minus six. So your six-point favorite Steelers are going to lose another tough franchise victory where the Patriots defeat the Steelers. And they somehow with a team that doesn't have a quarterback, that has no receiver whatsoever, the only thing they have is a little run game. And I think they could somehow just screw this game up and the New England Patriots get a victory over Pittsburgh, causing them a uh, tough six loss of the season. All right, Bars, you said you agree. Sure, Don't want to say, see, tell me to go F myself with that one. Nah, nah. You got to be straight up with yourself. Respect to that. But Bars, you did a great job as always. You put your beard on the line. Tyreek Hill, if you do not have 200 plus receiving yards bars is shaving all right so it's there it's gonna be fun we hopefully have hayden next week and we're going to continue some great quality content great job bars yo it was a good one all right man